All right, guys, back with another exciting bumper video. So this is off a 2013 Chrysler Town & Country minivan. Uh, this vehicle right here. I did some work, uh, it was maybe a year or two ago. There was a crunched in spot on the bottom of this door and I painted to the molding on that and there was some work done. Oh, I want to say somewhere in this lower part of the tailgate here, might have been here, it was punched in. Uh, that was fixed. But it came in for this bumper job. Uh, it's got some pretty good gouges in it. This side's got a pretty steep gouge in it. Uh, up towards the top, there's some really good ones. Unfortunately, that's going to have to be filled, which it is what it is. There's a really strange one right here. I don't know what happened. It almost looks like something hot got on it and melted it. But uh, And then normal chips and dings and scrapes all the way down this part of it here, gouges. This side has a couple of chippers in it here and gouge there. So uh, it's, uh, it's gonna need to be cleaned up here. So I'm gonna wipe this thing down and we're gonna go over it with some 320 and see how many of these gouges feather out. Um, like I said, I know some of them are gonna need to be filled but I thought this was gonna be a quick spot in job, but it's gonna basically be uh, prime the damn near two thirds of the bumper job. But we'll get it cleaned up and we'll take another look at it. Also, I don't know if you guys can see it. Maybe I can get my phone out and use the, the light from the phone to show it. I talked to him this morning. He said, check out this door jam. He said, it looks like a hammer fell inside the door jam or something. a big dent inside the door jam right there uh, it's broke definitely broken the paint you can see the rust right there so I'm gonna try and do a little something with that I don't know what exactly I can do for it but uh, sorry for the bad uh, lighting over here that's the best I can do for right now but I'm gonna try and repair that I suppose so let's uh, let's get that bumper cleaned up and uh, start sanding on it all right so <clears throat> now that I've got all the tar off this bumper I'm going to take the uh, DA sander with the 320 and the little interface pad to try and get out the light scratches, some of this deeper gouges, chunks that are missing out of it. It's not going to touch that, but I kind of want to see where I'm at. Um, I think I, you guys can probably see this, and it's not going to take this out. It's not going to take that out, most likely. It might. But we're just going to go over it. I'm going to start with the least invasive thing first um, to the small scratches. Uh, some of these chunks, I'll have to buzz over them with a little 180 to feather that out. And they will probably need a little putty wiped in them to get them to uh, go away. So that's just real light. And some of that stuff you can see. I'll do a little more. But basically, I'm just trying to give you an idea of how I do these. That was just real quick with 320. Um, you know, come up to a chip like this, that's not going to disappear. But these little light scratches like this will all go away with that 320 for the most part, except for that gouge. Again, um, probably have to put three or four coats of primer on this, which is somewhat abusive. But when you're not buying a new bumper cover, this is what you got to do. This is fleet vehicle stuff. This is how I handle them. So you just watch me run the DA for a couple minutes here and we'll take a peek at it. And then I'll finish up with the DA and we'll see what we gotta fill. I'm gonna turn the air down on the DA so it's not so wild. <laughs> Some of those are just clean.
clear coat scratches, some of them are all the way through into the base coat. I'm going to have to overall prime this bumper for the most part. Now you could do it without the interface pad, but there's so many contours, it's just, there's no flat areas on this. And it's easier to do the whole bumper than it is to try and spot because there's just too many areas. to find everything. Uh, you can see it's taken some of it out and other stuff it's not. It just takes a long time but that you can see I've already burned through up here and I know that's going to happen because this bumper has never been touched by me. It doesn't have that much paint on it, just factory paint. Um, but those scratches that were here and up into here have already pretty much come out. Uh, you can still maybe see a little shadow. You can see some of them up here too. But that's what it's going to take, just a lot of that going over the whole thing. If you break through the base coat, oh well, this whole bumper is getting painted. It's just... It's the way it's got to be, guys. So I don't want to bore you with an hour worth of sanding video. I'll bring you back when it's time to throw some primer on it. All right, well, here's the door jam. We kind of moved on from the bumper. Uh, rather than try and pull this dent, this is probably 18 gauge uh, sheet metal here. It'd be kind of difficult. So I basically just feathered it out and wiped it. It is a door jam. It had some rust that was starting around the edge of this right here. So I got all that removed. And uh, you know, if it's not 100% uh, pin straight, I don't think it's gonna be the end of the world, but uh, you can see how big that dent was. But I did block it. I did block it. So I'm gonna mask up the prime here shortly, but I wanted to show you guys. Uh, we're gonna walk outside because I got this bumper sitting in the sun, so hopefully the camera doesn't freak out on me. Except I can't see through the viewfinder, so we'll drag it back in the door in the shade. Alright, basically that's what you got. All these little areas of spot putty filling all those gouges. And I'm basically going to overall prime this bumper. I will mask. There's a trim piece that goes here. So I'll put a uh, soft edge right inside here scuff all that good with the red scotch pad which i've pretty much gone over it but um, some of these you can see where the putty went down in the scratch there were a couple other weird gouges we're gonna primer up and see what we end up with it's just one of those things man uh, this kind of stuff i don't recommend doing it this way this is just kind of a if you don't want to buy a new bumper cover, you can always go this route. It will work. Uh, the first time you crank it with something, uh, stuff like this corner, it'll gouge back out again. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. So I wanted to give you guys a look, see at that. We'll drag it back inside. There we go. Maybe that's a little better. Uh, this whole top edge is just, it's goofy as hell. Um, I'm down to the plastic in most spots, so uh, when that happens, before you prime and after you've wiped every or blown everything off real good, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. here we go. Here's some Bulldog Adhesion Promoter in a can. Um, I do have this stuff in quartz, but I just don't feel like uh, firing up a paint gun for. Uh, just a couple little spots that I got to spritz. So you'll put this on first on any cut throughs to the plastic. Um, if it's just cut through into the paint and primer, 
uh, you just go real easy on your first coat of primer and all should be well. So I'm going to get this cleaned up and masked off and hopefully bring you guys back to uh, throw some primer on. We'll see you in a bit. Alright, it's prime time. There's the Bulldog Adhesion Promoter. It's uh, two light coats about five minutes apart. Basically wait for it to flash off and then you can paint in five to ten minutes. There's the primer, Valspar DTM 2035. It's a four to one to one primer. So four parts primer, one part activator, one part reducer. So we got that ready. I just sprayed the Bulldog on so I gotta let that flash. Basically you just sort of dust it over it. Um, this was only on the plastic cut through so I know it was cut through around the bodywork and you don't want to saturate this thing you just I know it looks strange on there it looks cobbly and it looks weird but that's uh, that's what it's gonna do especially along this top here where a bunch of cut throughs where that bodywork was but uh, I got this masked a little bit um, there is a step pad that goes in here and I just don't want a bunch of overspray on it it's a it would be a bitch to scuff anyway. Um, I just need primer to kind of hit this edge and to work on this body work that's right here, okay? This, I just rolled some tape backwards. I don't need primer all the way down in there. I don't have body work. It's not all chewed up. Same thing on this side. I know it looks like a quick job and that's because it was. It doesn't need to be crazy. So while that's flashing, I'll show you. I've got the van bagged up. And I've got to do this little spot here. I didn't pull the rocker cover off. And I've got a little piece of tape down here. That's, uh, I don't know if it's going to focus. It's pretty dark in here. But it's, it's back masked. It's one of the tricks I showed the other day where you roll the edge over a piece of three quarter tape. So it's stuck down at the bottom, but it's actually loose close to that bodywork. And I'm going to be real careful not to spray a bunch of heavy coats in there. I'm just going to do a couple light coats, enough to cover that. It's a door jam, um, is what it is. And I've got the door bagged up here too, so I don't get any overspray on that. And then underneath that piece of tape that's on the edge that I just showed, this is just all taped right up to the edge of that rocker. So when I spray my basin clear, I'm going to scuff right to the top of that rocker cover that makes up this because it's plastic and it's an ass ache to take it off. Um, this is just a, a blow in, a spot in, whatever you want to call it. This is not a do it, you know, like a restoration job. This is just a fix that dent and get rid of that rust in there sort of deal and we'll melt the clear on it. Um, in the paint video So I'll bring you guys back here in a little bit. I just got to wait for this to flash I'll probably give it 10 minutes um, I just don't want any issues So there you go. It's pretty wet right there. I didn't put it on heavy, but Is what it is. So there you go. We'll be back in a minute. It'll be a second for you guys All right, I'm gonna put the first coat on this. I am going to go lightly over all the body work and all the cut throughs that were on it that I sprayed because I don't want any reactions. It should be okay, but I always spray that first coat real, real light.
we'll let that flash for five or ten minutes here and uh, we'll go ahead and put a real coat on this thing. All right, I'm going to bang another coat on this thing. Right after I adjust my gun back up, I shot inside that door jam and had to tweak it down a little bit, so bear with me a second. Still not getting real crazy hammering it on. Uh, normally you would start and prime the whole thing and come back to your areas, but there's so many of them. That's kind of the outside in method, so you always leave an edge to uh, let solvent come out of, but that's not gonna work on this. So we're kind of doing it backwards. I'm gonna let it set longer before I block it. Probably cut it open and put it outside in the sun for a couple days. So. Just a FYI on that. All right, there we go. There's four coats of that primer on here. Uh, only one coat goes down all the way to the edge. The other three coats were over the bodywork. Everything looks good so far, with the exception of one spot. And this is what happens when you hit the plastic. You get these fuzzies. And I know the camera should pick that up uh, looks like sand in there now a lot of times what will happen when that gets those little fuzzy spots in it you have to sand those down lightly and reprime those spots um, sometimes they sand out but 90% of the time they do not sand out so uh, you just need to scuff them with a little 320 and just spot prime the bad spot um, everything else is uh, pretty good I'm pretty excited about it so the uh, door jam spot I didn't show you any of the priming of this because it's too tight of quarters down here but I've got a little black guide coat over it and I've still got it masked off so tomorrow we will go ahead and uh, pull the masking on that and we'll probably just dry sand that with some uh, 400 and then I'll hit it quick with some 600 and then we'll prepare the blend area uh, I'll have to open that up a little bit. It's it's pretty tight for the primer But I'll need a little bit more room for the base coat I'm not worried about blending base coat way out or anything and that'll be a one coat of clear and a Shot of the fade out reducer. So there you go guys. I will uh, leave you with a parting shot of this boring ass bumper and uh, We'll catch you on the next one